Hey guys, today I am with Jennifer at Engagement PR and Marketing, and we have her on. We're going to talk about some quick, she's going to go over an overview of her, what she does, who she is, what her business does, and then we'll just start having a conversation with it. So yeah, it's great to have you on, Jennifer. Thank you, Victor. It's a pleasure to be here. Yeah. So I'd love to hear a quick intro about you and your company and yeah. things like that. Yeah. So I have been in PR and marketing for 30 years now, but I'm only 24 years old. Let's come to that. You know? <laughs> negative. There's negative numbers in there. I don't know how it all works out. <laughs> I'm a worth person, not numbers. No, I'm just kidding. Um, yeah. So I've been building and protecting brands from vision or zero dollars all the way to multi-million dollars, one that hit a billion dollars in less than three years. I've turned brands around from negative, unknown, old, stodgy into the go-to resources of their industries, really like trying to help people like formulate their messaging so that it's scroll stopping, you yeah. know, so that it really captures attention mm -hmm. for the right people. Because the way our brains work is we try to filter out everything that isn't important, right? You can't True. possibly pay attention to all the messages that are coming our ways. So our job as marketers, as PR people, is to really come at it from who do we need to pay attention yeah. and what are their issues that is important to them right now so that when they're scrolling, they go, oh, this is for me, you know, mm -hmm. and they stop and they pay attention. Yeah. And so it's really getting your message right and then getting you into media, getting your social media right, getting your earned media right, getting, you know, which is like CBS, NBC, New York Times, you know what yeah. I mean? Even the Jumbotron and, and uh, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like right yeah. in Times Square. So all those things add up to your credibility. Yeah. And the more people see uh, your name, your company name, your products, just that repetition adds credibility to your value, right? Sure. Adds value to your credibility. And so the more times that people see you, the better your credibility is, and then the more comfortable they become to buy from you. And that's what we try to do. Yeah, that's great. And like when it comes to like scroll stoppers, I'm right there with you. I use Facebook triggers when people scroll through their feed. I actually use triggers, which is like a recognition point. Like, oh, I recognize that. And they stop in their feed and then they engage with the ad. And that's a really good filtering system between, oh, that's important. I know what that is. Yes. And then it makes it where you have really engaging ads, posts, and things like that when you put triggers right. in your post. What are some engagement, what ways you get engagement to really get the person to stop, like right. really stop it in their really feed. Stop. Yeah. So it has to be important to them, right? Sure. It has to be answering a problem that they have right now. Mm -hmm. So um, I, I, I use old McDonald had a farm, right? <laughs> uh, because he came up with this really great acronym when I was just four years old. I had no idea it would become my mantra as I got older, yeah. but the E-I-E-I-O, right? Mm -hmm. So uh, when people are scrolling, they're looking for one of four things. So uh, edu education, yeah. information, entertainment, or inspiration. Okay. So one of those four things or any combination of those four things, and they say, oh, that's for me, you know? <laughs> Meaning yeah. it, it helps them to stop the scroll. They want to be entertained. Mm -hmm. They want to be inspired. Like that's what we go to social media. We want a brain break, <laughs> right? Yeah. Or if we're doing a Google search, we're looking for education. We're looking for information. Like what is it that, you know, you're gonna answer? Like how are you gonna solve my problem that I have right now? Mm -hmm. And so to get that engagement, you have to be answering one of those four things, first of all. Yeah. And if you ask questions, or if you say something that's shockingly different, right? Yeah. Like think clickbait. Mm -hmm. Even though we don't <laughs> want to think clickbait, because yeah. we want to think ours is better than clickbait, you know? But, <laughs> yeah. it, but, it, but it really just all is because yeah. you're trying to stop that scroll and get them to click, get them to say something, get them to make a comment, right? Get them to engage. And first we engage with the people that we know and like. No. Yeah. And that includes brands, right? If we feel like it's our brand, like we like to attach ourselves to brands. Sure. That helps our self-identity. That one's not me, this one is me. What is the difference is for us as marketers and you as business owners to really figure out, right? Mm -hmm. How are they associating with your brand? Yeah. Is it as a, mm, I use them every now and then, or I've used them before, or is it no, this one's mine, this is who I am, I will never use any other paper towel except, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Like that's how we get. Mm -hmm. And so um, when you think of that and when you're building your own brand, to really understand what are your unique identifiers? What distinguishes you? from everyone else and then how do you deliver that distinguishable message in a really exciting way yeah how are you interesting to them to mm -hmm. what they care about 
And so I've had people, I use this media acronym, right? Mm -hmm. Message, excitement, deliver your message with excitement, distinguish yourself, mm -hmm. be interesting and know your audience. And yep. whether it's your audience or through somebody else's media, mm -hmm. understanding their audience. And how are you going to do one of the E-I-E-I-O's, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> going on that though, how do you tell the difference between what your audience wants? So are you testing all four of those? Like, are you testing entertainment? Are you testing each one of those and seeing how they engage? How do you typically know what your audience is enjoying and which one they like? Or is it based off the person? It's a brilliant question. Yeah. It's actually, you want to kind of do all four of those. Okay. And then you want to do combinations of them. Okay. And you want to do them on different days. You know, you're doing different posts, different days. Uh, a mixture between your paid and your organic you know, and then you see what do people engage in? What are they really liking? Are they just hitting like, 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 or are they actually making comments? You know, mm -hmm. what is the difference? And see what they like and what they want from you, out of you. Yeah. And then as a difference in the paid ad versus the organic, is it different? Mm -hmm. Are they wanting different things when they come to your YouTube? Which kinds of videos are they engaging on more? And which ones are they just video, you know, mm -hmm. clicking on, they watch a few seconds and they ban out, right? Mm -hmm. That's why we need data. You've yep. got to know your numbers, right? Yes. And yes. we use that data to, to start tailoring messages all mm -hmm. the way down. It seems that this, t this vertical of our audience likes these kinds of things a little more often. It doesn't mean you don't do all four mm -hmm. it just means you give them more of what they want and you pepper in the other things like if you really need them to have education mm -hmm. and they only care about the memes that inspire them <laughs> yeah, yeah you have to figure out how to weave the two in together you know how can you do a learn more after you've inspired them and they're like oh yeah like yeah that yeah. one's me right yeah like that's what we do like you can see those inspiring messages when people hit like they're like emphatic like, yes <laughs> you know what i mean right? trying to break the screen yeah. right yeah, yeah that yeah. one's me and other ones are like oh, i'll support you <laughs> you don't get to see how hard they hit it you only get to True. see the numbers yeah. but you do get to see like how, where people are engaging and how sure. they're engaging and then how do you want to adapt from there so when you're posting all this content with all these different types of things um with, with whether it's entertainment engaging and all these other other types of methods you're going uh -huh. for how are you analyzing that data are you using a tool to e analyze your data between all these different channels or are you actually going through and just check like literally looking about which one is do performing well yeah it's actually more of the latter. I mean, a little bit of both, little right? Bit right? Both. You know what I mean? You have yeah. to have the data analytics doing. I'm not going to do that data analytics. We already <laughs> confirmed I don't do numbers. Right? <laughs> I'm just kidding. Um, but yeah, no, I mean, it's really like coming up with, because it's sort of the same thing as like when you have, when you're in earned media. The earned media is where you earn your way onto other people's stages yeah. versus your owned media, which is your social media that we've been talking about, your paid media, right? And yeah. then there's your search media. They all intertwine together. Mm -hmm. But if you think about your earned media is in the same scroll as all of your social media and your paid media. Mm -hmm. And then yeah. all of those come up in your search media. So they all play in together. Yeah. So you have to look at a variety of, of data sets mm -hmm. and see where people are engaging. True. It's also on yours. Like if you get an earned media spot, you want to stick that on your website mm -hmm. and then you want to link from your website to your social media so that it's all those links back. Right. You, if you go from your social media straight to the um, to the source, mm -hmm. you've skipped by skipped your, your own website and it actually does worse in the SEO. As you know, the Facebook organic is very low when it, you're posting right. on Facebook. You can have 100,000 followers on Facebook, but then you're only going to reach like a thousand of them. Like the Facebook feed, the Facebook organic is horrible. And that's right a now. higher higher than you're probably actually. Gonna yeah, reach. yeah, exactly. <laughs> so I guess what are some strategies you've been able to reach organically? Uh -huh and paid media mm -hmm. to really reach your customer at like a large scale. What have you been doing for that? So don't be afraid to keep repurposing the same posts, Okay. right? So uh, one of the things is you post mm -hmm. and you see what kind of engagements it's getting. And, yeah. if, and then you can like it yourself mm -hmm. and it brings it back up into the feed. Yeah. And then you can see how it's going and if people are engaging in it, then you can comment on it yourself and it brings it back up into the feed. So it, the Facebook algorithm, it does only allow, you know, it's really like five to eight percent of your organic reach do the people see and you wonder like how come only the same people comment on my stuff? <laughs> those are the only people who see it you know yeah. 
And the thing is, the more engagement it has, the more the algorithm reads it like, oh, this must be interesting to people. So we'll show it to a little bit more and a little bit more. Mm -hmm. But you can take some of your older posts that got decent engagement and repurpose them and share them back up again into your feed mm -hmm. and see if they get more comments. Like you want to add to it. You want to add value to it. You want to say something new about it. You want to yep. say something controversial. You want to link to another article that either supports it or contradicts it. Yeah. Right. And so you're continuing the conversation with people in your own comment feed. Mm -hmm. And so you're saying, you know, hey, I just got this, you know, I just saw this article and you link to it, mm -hmm. you know, that says, you know, something confirming or contradicting. What do you guys think? You know? <laughs> and you can do that yeah. in a post, like in the organic part of the post, like sharing it, mm -hmm. or you can do it in the comment feed. Okay. Either one, you're trying to get people to like, comment, and share. Yes. Those are the combinations. And the more of the combination you get, the more that the algorithm says people care about this more than they care about some other things. Perfect. Yeah. And when it comes down to it, is there any particular spot? Like I've noticed that posting in Facebook groups and posting on your personal, like your personal um, Facebook place is, has been a lot beneficial when reaching organically. Mm -hmm. Is there any desired spot? Like, is there any Facebook group strategy you have or any other strategy to really try to reach the most people organically, like on any social That's media? That's an interesting question. Um, I mean, is the group public or is it private, right? So True. a public group, mm -hmm. uh, more people do tend to engage because they're all part of that group for a reason, right? Yeah. Yeah. But is it a group that actually is engaged or is it a group that just exists? True. So there are those yeah. differences, right? Mm -hmm. How much is the owner of that group really helping to motivate and encourage other people to run a really good Facebook group? You need to make it about everyone else. Yeah. And that is a really hard thing because people think, well, I really want it to be about me and my company and my purpose. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. I'm the one that posts all the interesting stuff, you know? <laughs> yeah. Well, that's only interesting to you. So you got to remember, like everybody listens from their favorite station, mm -hmm. WIIFM, right? <laughs> What's in it for me? Yeah. So as Mark marketers, as posters, as engagers, we have to think what's in it for them. Why yeah. do they care? And they only care from a what's in it for me perspective, <laughs> yeah, right? Yeah. So they are there to promote themselves, their knowledge, to share True. their expertise, to argue their point of view. <laughs> so don't be afraid to be controversial. Mm -hmm. Don't be afraid to post something that's going to create some excitement, right? Yeah. Excitement is what we bring to it. Interesting is what they get from it. Yeah. So that's the difference between exciting and interesting, right? You know, like you want to think, well, it's interesting to me. Well, that doesn't mean it's interesting to everybody else. True. What makes it interesting to them right now? What makes it important to them right now? Can you make it urgent and important? How do you balance the marketing and sales with brands? Because I see so many like Instagram accounts of brands where they only post pictures of their product at different angles. And you're just like... Wow, like, they, not working. The, yeah, it's not working. They, it's like, they're it's, like, what's in it for yeah, me? Yeah, what's in it for me? So really, <laughs> how, do you, how great <laughs> we are. So how do you balance the marketing and sales for brands? So uh, the, the key word of the day in messaging is limbic. So you want to kind of tap into that limbic part of the brain, right? Yeah. The brain that, that the part that makes you go, yes, that's me. Yes, that's mm -hmm. for me, you know, and you do that by speaking in their language. You're looking for this. Now we have a tendency, right? And you look at so many people's website, we, this, we, that we're so great. Check us out. This here's how we're different. Mm -hmm. Here's how you want to work with us all about me, 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 me. Right. Yeah. And, and that was the language. <laughs> yeah. That's not the language because <laughs> people don't care about you. True. <laughs> until yeah. they know that you care about them. Mm -hmm. So we want to know that they understand us. So don't worry about sales as much as you worry about solving problems, understanding, making sure that people under like that your brand understands the buyer and the problems and what's current and what's urgent of today. Yeah. And if you look at what happened over the past year and a half, everything is flipped upside down. Everything true. that we knew to be true is no longer true, right? True. We live in a whole different world. Yeah. We've lost brands. Brands have elevated. I mean, you know, Zoom, like, holy Zoom. Ball, like it's been around <laughs> forever. And then it's not forever, but yeah. you know what I mean? They, they went from eat, you know? Yeah. <laughs> and so, <laughs> but you can't predict that. Like true. who would have thought the whole world would start working from home, you true. know? 
And yeah. so um, how you can't really kind of predict those kinds of trends because you don't know what's coming up, but you have True. to pay attention to today's news. And that's how you get in the earned media to begin with, yeah. is what's important to them mm -hmm. right now. And they're looking at it from what's important to their audience. Mm -hmm. So to get into earned media, think about, and it all ties into sales, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. Because you're building that credibility mm -hmm. and showing your audience that you understand what's happening in their world right now. Yeah. What's making them stress out? What's keeping them awake at night? What's stopping their sales or what's boosting their sales? Mm -hmm. And then how are you fitting into that whole entire thing? Yeah, exactly. And what it comes down to, no one really cares about you until you give that person value. Exactly. Like you have to help them in some way and then they're gonna go, oh, who is this person? What is he, like he helped me. And uh, like yes. the more value you give them, yes. the more interest in, like humans are like naturally very, very like we have very like good attribution when it comes to like we really want to help each other. Right. And once you provide someone and help them, they want to help you back yes. in some weird way. Yes. But it's there, now there won't be any direct ROI with that. But in some in some way, they are going to see you and understand you and want to be with you. Yes, in, there in is way. exact ROI, though, because mm -hmm. it comes in referrals. It sure. comes in reviews. It comes in. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like I gave this to you. You you were helped by it. You don't say that. Yep. They say that mm -hmm. you gave this to me. You helped me. You held my hand when no one else would. Right. Yeah. And then I want to do something back for you. What can I do? I would love to refer people to you. Fantastic. Can you start with a review for me? Because that really is going to help elevate my SEO. That's really going to help other people understand mm -hmm. that they want to work with me, why yeah. they want to work with me, what they're going to get, or the value is that they're going to get from working mm -hmm. with me. You yeah. know what I mean? So, yeah. And when it comes down to it, what, when a client comes to you and they say, what is the direct ROI I will get out of this? And it's very difficult when, yes. with content marketing, yes. like with social media marketing, it's like with Facebook ads, you can like get a direct right. ROI, but with content marketing, it's a little bit different because this one post may get them started in the funnel and they just may randomly purchase like the product at some point. Yeah. So how do you track ROI and how do you really help that process? That is such a, it's like a challenging <laughs> question. That has been the question in PR since time began. Like yeah. I told you, I've been in 30 years. We've been talking about it for that long. And long. <laughs> we used to try to measure it in turn, like make it equal to, well, if you took out an ad that was the exact space of the same article, it would have cost you $10 million, you know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And we got it to you for our simple, you know? And today it's really, um, it's really just adding that value over and over and over again, because yeah. then when people, Google search you, mm -hmm. the, the algorithm again, like we're really working with algorithms. So sure. ROI comes in the algorithms and how easy are you to be found, right? Yeah. So if you think about, there's really only five ways that people discover your business. So four of them are media, mm -hmm. right? There's the, the owned media, which is all your social media, your website, your blog, if you have a blog, which you're talking about content, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Articles that you put out, articles that you contribute to, then you were getting into earned media, right? That's mm -hmm. number two. Earned media is, is media that other people own and you have to earn your way onto their stages. Yeah. And so um, then we have paid media, which is the advertising or, or the... Um, sponsorships or sponsored articles, like mm -hmm. anytime you pay to be in front of an audience. Yeah. And then there's search media, which is your reviews and your, you know what I mean? Like yeah. all the, and the content really helps with the SEO, right? It helps mm -hmm. with that search media. It boosts your organic, your owned media. Mm -hmm. And then that helps earned media say, okay, they've got eyeballs. People care about them. They're going to bring more eyeballs to me, mm -hmm. right? Because yeah. they care about one thing, which is ratings. Right. They care about how many eyeballs they're getting. And yeah. then all these things start playing into each other. Hmm. And then the fifth one is referral. Yeah. Right. And that's also channel partners and things yeah. like that. So they all play into each other. True. And where does the ROI come in? It comes in and how easily are you found? If yeah. we Google search your topic, where do you fall in the ranking? Because everyone says, oh, it, you know, where do you hide the dead bodies? <laughs> On page two of Google search, right? Like no one goes there. <laughs> oh, that's great. <laughs> so it's yeah. not about, you can't own the internet. No yeah. one's going to own the internet. So how do you own your tiny slice in each little market segment at a time? Mm -hmm. Where does your audience live? Yeah. You know, meaning in their head yeah. with regard to your space. 
And then how are you getting them to stop the scroll so that they're paying attention? Because it doesn't matter if it's earned, owned, paid, searched. You have to stop the scroll. It doesn't matter yeah. if it's email. Email is part of your owned media, True. right? You still have to stop the scroll. Yeah. And when you're pitching traditional media, mainstream media, and you're pitching, they're still in their email and they get inundated every single day with hundreds of media pitches, yes. just like yours. So yeah. how, they're like, how quickly can I get to a delete, right? Yeah. How quickly can I get to a delete? Yes. And so you have to capture their attention immediately. Yeah. It has to be relevant to them on that day for the articles that they're writing, at least within their headspace of what's coming up, yeah. which is based on the news of today, or it's based on what's going on, or it's based on how much can you shock them? How much can you, what's the clickbait? Yeah. <laughs> It's still exactly. clickbait because you have to, like, they need to know immediately that you can help meet their needs. What's in it for me, right? Sure. That's, they're like, how are you going to help me? Yeah. You're not going to help me right now. I'll file you. <laughs> Once you're filed, you're filed. Like, it doesn't yeah. matter if you're round filed or you're filed in a folder, you're still round filed. You know what yeah. I mean? You didn't get it. So mm -hmm. you, you just keep going back and it's relationship building, yeah. you know, and it's really just like, how can I help you with your stories? Mm -hmm. I want to be the resource for this, you know? Exactly. What, but they don't care that you want to be the resource. They want to care how are you as a resource going to help me write my articles better <laughs> so that I'm going to get more eyeballs, right? More yeah. ears, more people to my podcast. Mm -hmm. How are you going to help me increase my listeners? You know, yeah. whatever it is. At the end of the day, we're going for relationships. Absolutely. That's really what we're doing. We're really trying to build those relationships yes. with customers, with clients and everything else to really get your voice out there mm -hmm. and to just add as much value to start that relationship building process. Right. Like we, we need to help them in some way and then they they feel thankful for that and then we start that process of establishing a relationship with them. Right. So that's really what we're going when it comes to the social media and content game. It's we're really about building relationships. Right. Well, yeah, because with, with the brand. Yeah. You know what I mean? To say yeah. this brand gets me. They yeah. understand my issues of my wrinkles that I have to lift the sleeve up, you know, <laughs> like if it's, if it's skincare products, yeah. you know what I mean? Like, yeah. how are they going to make me look better every day? Well, that one still gave me this, but this one lifts my face up, you know? <laughs> like, it's meeting a need, right? Yeah. It's meeting a need, you know? Um, like dermatology, I work with a dermatologist, you know? And, and his thing, like, how do you differentiate? Because there's a bajillion and a half, right? Yeah. So how do you differentiate? And so you kind of come up with those things that, that education that is education that, that one person at a time, one group of people are looking for that. So you're speaking to one audience at a time. Like people get so baffled by the, by the avatar, but I serve so many, how can I have one avatar? You have one avatar per product line typically. You know what I mean? Yeah. You as a business might have five avatars. I don't know how many product lines you have. Like it depends, but you, you can't be talking to all those people at once because they're not going to stop the scroll because you have to like, water down your message for everyone to understand that it's for them. And then you're speaking to no one. True. So you have to really get targeted and really understand what are they going through right now? What's important to them right now? And then how are you meeting their needs right now? And the more content you put out, the more ads that you do, the more organic posts that you do, the more you're included in, in earned media articles and stories and podcasts and whatever, it all elevates your credibility where people say, that guy's the expert. He knows what he's talking about. I heard him on this thing, or sometimes it's even, I saw his name associated to this and it was a part of a big event like this. And yep. so he must know what he's doing because all these other people thought he was an expert. <laughs> it just happens naturally in your yeah. brain. So the more people see that, you know, credibility happens through repetition. Our sure. brains learn through repetition. So yeah. it doesn't matter if you're teaching your brain something good or you're teaching your brain something bad. The more you see and do things, the more your brain goes, oh, that's the norm, <laughs> even if it's not, right? True. Yeah, you're totally right about that. Is there any opportunities that a brand, like for example, like Instagram Reels are really good for organic or anything else. Is there any other brands opportunity wise through Facebook advertising and through organic that brands should start exploring right now? So whenever uh, uh, there's a whenever there's a new social media aspect, you kind of want to test it out. Yeah. But more importantly, when there's an established um, media like Facebook has been around for a while, Instagram has been around for a while, and they come out with a new toy, they want people to engage in that new toy. True. So the TV, the lives, the all you know, yeah. that's the toy of today. Yeah. So the more you engage in their new toys. The more that they're gonna, they they will promote you because they want to show 
look at all the success that these people are getting with our new toy. Yeah. So you want to play with the new toys. You want to kind of get in there with the new things. Mm -hmm. Like a lot of people are like, um, if you're not an early adopter in technology, I'm not an early adopter in technology. Mm -hmm. I'm like, y'all figure that out. <laughs> I'm going to sit here with my, you know, <laughs> with my desktop. No. With the Windows you know? 7. <laughs> <laughs> no. But you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. But you have to with the new toys because that just play with it. You can't go wrong, you know? And so you just play with it and you get out there and you start doing it and they put, they promote you. Yeah. So then the medium is promoting you instead of you promoting the medium by use, you know what I mean? Yeah. So when you're be an early adopter for all those new toys, whenever something else comes out and you're seeing that people do things, watch one or two like you don't have to watch a whole bunch of what they do and just think let's try it you know <laughs> yeah. let's see what comes out let's see how it works out let's see how you know and just kind of get used to being one of those early adopters in the toys and that's when it comes down to just testing yes. like i'm all like i'm very like i'm religious about testing right. new things like right. you got to test your new creative yes. you got to test new like strategies and yeah. formats and everything that you do it's like there's so many different ways that you can optimize yes. like and your entire content strategy yes. whether it's email whatever social media it can be literally anything yeah it's important to always be testing like crazy because that's it's gonna give you the most success Do you know and we, that's you have to test messages because yeah. just because you think it's fabulous that's that's <laughs> That's that audience, right? You yeah. know what I mean? The yeah. people who think like you. Yeah. But there's yeah. a whole world of people who don't think like you. Shocking, I know. <laughs> but even the Wall Street Journal does A-B testing in their headlines, in their actual print of their newspapers. Wow. They will come out with two different versions of the same newspaper on the same exact day. Wow, I didn't know that. They do, and it, because they're they're targeting audiences. Mm -hmm. This kind of audience wants to read these types of stories. This type of audience wants to read these types of stories. So it's not really non-biased articles so much anymore, as much as it is feeding people the kinds of angles that people want to hear. Yeah. So we're tailored because they're going from a what's in it for them. Yeah. They're meeting people where they are. They're meeting people's needs of the things that they want to know and learn here. Cool. Yeah. Is there anything else that you think is interesting that's coming up or where you think social media is going or anything else that you want to cover? You know, it's so interesting. It depends on your brand. Like, yeah. you know, you have to go where your brand is. Like, yeah. you know what I mean? Like, not where your brand is, but where your audience is. So, like, uh -huh. if you're a musician and you're trying to become known, you kind of want to get on Twitch. People yeah. are like, I've never even heard of Twitch. <laughs> well, that's because it was a gaming site. Like, and it yeah. was only little kids, but they would turn on, you know, to watch other people play games so that they can get past the hard things, you know what I mean, or whatever. Yeah. And then um, musicians started creating music to go with the, the gaming thing so yeah. that it was a little more entertaining, right? Yeah. And then people started recognizing the song. So then they opened up their own mu music channel within Twitch. And then, you know, Twitch even bought Bob Vila, the, the, the painter from the 1970s. With oh, the big really? Wow. And I, I forget what the stats are, but it was like in the first month, he got more views than his entire series of the 1970s. Wow. Interesting. That's crazy. Right? Yeah, I mean, yeah. it's something like that, you uh -huh. know? I don't know exactly what it is. Don't quote me. <laughs> <laughs> but it's something like that. It's really absolutely spectacularly amazing. So, where can you go and be creative? Where can you know, like people are, oh, I don't want to do TikTok, you know? I don't really blame you. But at the same time, if that's where your audience is, be, be engaging on it. Be funny. Be fun. Be something. Be entertaining. Yeah. So, go where the trends are, where your people want to be. Mm -hmm. Where I've been really able to try to get a lot of TikTok content because a lot of brands really struggle to get on TikTok yes. because it's a whole new format. Yes. Like we're we're not like you, brands are now adopted to Instagram and yes. Facebook formats now, and it's very it's a whole different dynamic. Yes. It really is. They don't really know how to approach it very well. And what we've been doing is we've been doing TikTok influencer campaigns to create uh -huh. lots of like get people established to the brand. And that way, that way customers understand it, get yeah. the brand awareness out yeah. there. And we actually take the ones that go viral and we advertise them and kind of boost them from there. What are some ways that you found to really help brands kind of adopt TikTok to kind of understand it a little bit better? So, I mean, think about what, what are they already engaging on? You can kind of look and see, yeah. you know, um, and, and then I, TikTok tends to be humorous, you know, yeah. so you, you have to come at it from something mm -hmm. that's funny. Yeah. If your brand is not funny, don't try to be funny. Yeah. Don't TikTok's not for you. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. But if you can be silly and you can add something that is shockingly, it's really about that 
shockingly, what the what? <laughs> <laughs> I, I assume you would do awesome on TikTok, right? Because <laughs> <laughs> I'm very expressive. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you just, like, can you be funny? Yeah. If you cannot be funny, don't be funny. Yeah. Like, non-funny funny is not funny. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's except, double not funny. <laughs> except that we make fun of you really badly, which can also work because, you know, yeah. like, if you think about the old school, like, I don't care if you said something good about me or you said something bad about me, just spell my name right. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> Uh, there's a truth to that because, uh, especially in, in the USA, like we're very forgiving people, yeah. but that for the most part around the world, people are forgiving. So mm -hmm. it's okay to go out and try something new as long as you're going to go, if it flops majorly or it turns into a disaster because crisis communications, like that is one of the things that we excel in, right? Yeah. It's like turning that brand around from an oops, you know? And so you just got to be transparent. You have to be willing to say, we tried something, it didn't quite work the way we wanted it to, you know? How yeah. do you be able to laugh at yourself? Yeah. If you have the personality type that you cannot laugh at yourself, don't don't attempt it. You know no. what I mean? Like everything is not for everyone. Sure. Don't be afraid to stay in your lane, especially if it's working, but venture out a little bit, right? <laughs> Life happens just outside the comfort zone. <laughs> Yeah. But we like our comfort zone because we're very comfortable there. We're like, this one's working. Why should we ever change anything? You know, <laughs> yeah. meanwhile, you know, like Netflix happens to Blockbuster. Blockbuster stayed their lane and they are no more. You know, sure. and Netflix was like, you know, Netflix wanted Blockbuster to buy him and Blockbuster really? said no. Really? I didn't no, know. No that. one's going to do that. And yeah. now Blockbuster is completely obsolete and Netflix is like, woo! You know, like, <laughs> yeah. It's kind of like Yahoo had a chance to buy Google for like $50 million right. and like Yahoo is like, nah, not worth it. Now they're multi, like built right. hundred billion or yeah. whatever it is. Biggest competitor they have, yes. you know, I mean, and surpassed them, you yes. know, so it's like, just pay attention to what is happening. You can't go out and buy every single people, like, you know what I mean? True. Every single yeah. other company that comes your way, mm -hmm. but don't be afraid to take risks and to learn and to don't be afraid to go outside of your comfort zone because yeah. for the truth, like if new trends come in, you got to pay attention. And to sure. tell you the truth, it used to be the experience down. It is not necessarily, it is a lot of what is coming up. True. And so you have to pay attention to the younger crowds. What's happening? Because even though they might be 10 to 11, 15, 18 right now, and you think, okay, they're not that far off from taking <laughs> over your entire company, right? Yeah. They're five to 10 years out. <laughs> They could be a global brand in no time. And you were like, what? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And it all comes down to like testing. Like, like it doesn't really matter how much experience you have if you're constantly testing. Cause there's new features that come out on social media platforms every single day. And that's what you should and be playing. That's like, like for Instagram reels, for example, right. if someone with tons of experience only posts on the normal Instagram right. feed, you're not going to be very much exposed. Right. But the, for the person that's always testing and always testing new things, they're going to grow tremendously right. on all this new organic, yeah. all these new, and they're going to reach a lot more people. Yes. So it all comes down to, it doesn't matter how much experience you have. It matters how much you test. Yes. That is what matters. It matters how much you're out there. Yeah. Get that because credibility happens in our brains through repetition. Yeah. And then from every people, you know what I mean? Where is the repetition? How are they saying? <laughs> what do they agree with? But you still can elevate in credibility even if they think you're a kook. They think you're a kook. <laughs> but your credibility is up there as a kook, you know? <laughs> but if yeah. that's your lane and you just happen to be, these people think you're a kook and these people think you're brilliant, you're still in your lane, you know? Yeah. Don't worry about everybody thinking you're a kook as long as you believe in what you believe in. Yes, exactly. So is there anything else you want to cover or you think that is interesting or anything else? Um, I think just really start to understand your place in the market. Why are you necessary as a brand? Why do people like you? Why do they want to buy from you? Yeah. You know, and don't worry about your competition. Yeah. Understand where you are in relation to your competition, but really understand you. Yeah. Understand why people want to buy from you and then understand them. You know what I mean? So yeah. once you understand yourself and why it's important that you're doing this, I'm a big proponent of mission, vision, values. And people like all the time they go, oh, we have our mission statement. I'm like, it's not about a statement. Yeah. It's about a movement, right? Yeah. Your vision should be so big that your movement moves people. Yeah. Your vision needs to be that big. Your mission is what you deliver to make that vision a reality. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not about a statement. 
It's about a lifestyle. It's about knowing why you go into work every day because you're trying to create this better world for your audience, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. And then your values are your how. These are our guidelines. This is how we operate. This is what we believe in. These are our ethics and our morals and like, this is how we are. This is who we are, right? Yeah, that's so great. That's and like, I, I haven't created a mission statement just because I think like, I don't know how to create a mission statement that's not gimmicky. I feel like that's that's where most it people can be don't one word. like. That's what feel like where, that's where pe most people get stuck on mission statements. They think it, they're gimmicky. Yeah. Like I don't want to see like obviously I'm trying to change the world, but like that's obviously super gimmicky, so and cliche, and I don't want to do that. So how you do change you change the world? How for whom? Why? And what? In what aspect? You know what I mean? You want to yeah. make it easier for people to find the brands that you work with. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. or, so what is it about that? Like, why you then? A lot of people want to change the world. You know, you yeah. have to, you want to go deep. You know, when people say go vertical and go deep, yeah. what that means is you consistently are asking yourself, what's behind that? What's more than that? Why does that matter? What is it about that? You know, yeah. and, and you keep asking that. That's what going deep is. So you have your answer. And this is what happens is people go, Oh, I, I answered that question. That's my answer. <laughs> well, that's how you know what's behind that. Why is that important? Why does that matter? Mm -hmm. Why does it matter that you why, help why, people why, find why, their why, brands? Why, yeah. why does it help? Why does it matter? You know, it's really like what's behind it. You know, yeah. why is an attacking question and a defensive question? When yeah. you start asking why, 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 people are like, well, because. <laughs> but because is actually the most powerful word in marketing, period. Did you know that? Really? Yes. Because Got you. your brain is now, why? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm, sus I'm in suspense, yes. <laughs> and it doesn't matter what I actually say afterwards. It satisfies that need in your brain to have something answer that word because. So it's understanding the psychology of buying. You know, why do, yeah. why do we buy? What is it? So then what is it behind that? What is it, but what is important about that? What, what's, what's, like, why does that matter? You know, mm -hmm. like, okay, what else? What else? What else? Mm -hmm. You can just keep asking that question. I think um, Airbnb did a brilliant exercise years ago where they asked their property owners, right? Their, I don't know, members, I think they call them. Um, yeah. What does five-star service look like? And mm -hmm. they came up with what five-star service looks like. Okay, oh. what does six-star service look like? Mm -hmm. People didn't have six stars. Yeah. What is seven stars? They took it all the way out to, I think, to 11 stars. Really? Yes. So Service? then people, <laughs> right, wow. look it up. It's a great article. It's okay. great stories about it. There's a lot. Cool. And people have adopted this entire thing because it's like, you know, the five stars were the basics, right? Yeah. You've got to meet their needs. Six stars was like, oh my God, we have surfboards there. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> yeah. have, and then seven stars and then eight stars. You know what I mean? So it's like, how do you go above and beyond? Yeah. I think that's what it comes down to. Like, just adding the most value possible. And usually that is through, add, like, really putting yourself out there and yeah. also going above beyond for yeah. specific people yeah. creates even a more personal connection. Yeah. Like sending that one-on-one -on -one message to help that one person out. Yeah. You might not get a direct ROI on that one person, yeah. but 10 years from now, right. you might develop a relationship with yeah. them that could change your life forever. Right. So that's exciting. That's the exciting thing. We're only yeah. one relationship that from changing your life forever. And that's, exactly. that's fascinating. It, it makes things exciting when you connect with people. Exactly. You're like, like I'm only one person away in like 20 years from now and that'd be really important. Exactly. So you just don't know until it works right, out. Right. And, and just exciting. have fun. Honest yeah. to God, it doesn't matter what, what, what problem it is that you're solving. Mm -hmm. There's gotta be fun in there somewhere. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like you have to make it a bit of like, make it a bit of entertaining, like have some fun with it. Make yeah. sure that your, your employees get to share their own expertise so they can help make it fun. Make sure that your team is all engaged. You know what I mean? Like yeah. you're not the only one sitting there at the top. You know what <laughs> yeah. I mean? It's, yeah. a, it's a community. Mm -hmm. And then how do you fit into your industry and make it fun for them too? Like turn everything into a lot more enjoyment and the world is so much better. Yeah, especially when it comes to like motivating employees. Like it's, it's really important that your employees believe in what you do, yes. whether if it's your mission statement or the, the more you really try to add value to your employees, like just everyone, like yeah. re whether they're clients, whether it's your employee, yep. just adding as much value to their life saying, hey, what do you want to do? Like, how can how can I make my job better for you? Right. Because like as an entrepreneur, it's my job. I have two jobs. Yeah. I have to make sure everyone's communicating yep. and they, that they enjoy their job on a daily basis. Because yeah. yeah. if I do those two things, they they're happy they as long excel. as as long as they're they happy. Excel. 
that I did my job. Yeah. So that way, like no matter what happens, I want to develop them as a person because I'm trying to grow a relationship. Yeah. Like regardless, they go and quit and go do some something else. I'm happy yeah. because I want them to su excel and be successful because I'm doing it for the relationship. Exactly. I don't I don't care about the I, short term. I could yeah. be like, darn, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> but like that's not going to accomplish it. I just I would sour that entire relationship because yeah. of that. So it's really about developing that long-term relationship with yeah. them and trying to grow them as a person yeah. and not with not having any intentions behind it. Right, right, yeah. right. That's yeah, really important. I mean, no one cares what you know until they know that you care. <laughs> yeah. Right? Talk about cliches, but it's yeah. so true. It is a cliche statement, but it's so, 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 so true. Yeah, it's I totally fabulous. agree. Um, so yeah, uh, tell them how to find you, like your LinkedIn social or whatever your socials are, um, where to find your website. And I like am that. Jennifer L. Horsepool. Whether okay. it's my middle initial or my last name, my L is my most important letter. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so you can find me almost everywhere through Jennifer L. Horsepool. I'm engagementpr.com. Mm -hmm. Definitely come and see me. I would love to work together with you. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. I am all about relationships. I'm all about it, you know, really elevating brands in people's minds by understanding their audience and what their needs are. Yeah. And so, um, yeah, or you can email me at info at engagementpr.com. Cool. Thanks Great so to much. have you on. Oh, you know what? If you want 10 tips to get in the media, you can text PR, like public relations, yeah. to 26786. 26786, PR, like public relations, and I'll send you 10 tips on how to get in the media. You'll love it. Cool. Thanks. Check that out, guys. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Bye-bye. Boom.